we lost a brother, we lost uh, an icon, we lost uh, someone who has really, you know, sweated for this nation, someone who has really proven beyond doubts of his, you know, uh, patriotism to his uh, country, and uh, someone who, to me, you know, a good friend, you know, a best one, uh, a brother, you know, uh, a colleague in the national team, somebody I saw uh, who it's everything, you know. So to me, I still, you know, feel the shock. Uh, a leader, a gentleman, you know, a man every upcoming one could always look up to and said, look, I want to be like Stephen Keshi. I want to be like this leader, you know. A leader who takes it so calm and very calculating, very. It's a leader who never believe in aggression and who never believe in, you know, any kind of aggressive uh, act at all. Everything about Stephen Keshi has always been very calm and gentleman-like and every time calculating and uh, focused. I've always known him and he has always shown it in his... Um, uh, assignments as a player and as a coach as well. You know, there's an icon, you know, and uh, in terms of uh, what the nation and the football governing body should do, uh, giving a play, giving a stadia to his name after him, naming a stadia after him, uh, if they could get some, some well design uh, status that could be placed either in his state or elsewhere in the federal capital territory or you know even in Lagos because Stephen Keshi started his career you know in Lagos a situation came up again where uh, Stephen and I Stephen Keshi and I have to travel out of Nigeria to UK to have a trial with Tottenham Hotspots, which many people don't know about. We did it coded. When we got to the UK, suddenly it was time to for the camp, the Nigerian Super Eagles camp to be open here in Nigeria. So we got a message that we all players must report to camp, you know, within a deadline. So I I and Keshi just looked at ourselves, planned, what are we going to do? The very morning we are about to have our trial with Tottenham Hotspur, we just have to pick up our bag, we look at the stadium of Tottenham Hotspur, we look at the pitch where we are standing on the, on the pitch side looking at the field, so we are going back to Nigeria. Why? Because of the patriotism in us. You know, 94 squad we are giving houses. You know, up to date, we've not collected these houses from the federal government. It's really touching. Now, what would you expect? He's gone. He's not there. The family, the children are there. These houses are houses that the children could look up to and say, yes, this was what Nigeria did for my father when he was living, when he played and won the, the glory for the country, for Nigerian. We feel disappointed. We feel cheated to some extent. And uh, what can we say to our children after all these things? You know, sometimes, I know another challenging area, we leave our families at home, back home, and we go for these competitions. Sometimes we don't come back on time. Sometimes all sorts of things happen before we come back. If you come back healthy, Thanks to God Almighty. Wow. If you've been doubting that Coach Stephen Keshi lived a life of service, and that's your testament, Peter Rufai, a.k.a. Dudu Mayana, who have also given his all to Nigerian football, confirming the, the life of service that Coach Stephen Keshi lived. They went to Tottenham Hotspur for trials. They were ready. Who would do such? They heard that there's a call-up. They need to be back to the country. They left individual benefits and came back. 
to fight for Nigeria. It's a Friday morning. Ben Alaya joins us now. Uh, ben Alaya has close ties with the late Super Eagles coach, Stephen Keshi. He was media officer at the time the, uh, Stephen Keshi was employed. Uh, yeah. Till the time he left the job of the Super Eagles. Ben Alaya, tough times. Good to have you on the program. Thank you for coming. Misty eyes for me. And uh, this, is, this is a tough time to really come on television to talk know. about the big boss because uh, it was like my blood. My, my person, you know, when I mean my body, it was we were that close, and uh, and and uh, to imagine that uh, we we do have issues, though. Yeah. We, we disagree at times, but I mean, he was a leader by excellence. He mm. was a leader by excellence. I, I can to. say it. Yeah. I mean, for somebody who who can work with the likes of Dan the Bull and Mokachi, mm. you, I mean, Dan the Bull is a huge personality, personality too. Yeah. He, he, takes, he says it's because Sir Keshi has the boss, is it? Yeah. Or God said this, and it must be this. And he, uh, he was a leader. He was a leader personified in yeah. every ramifications. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't yeah. know how to describe him. You will try. Yeah. I, I will still keep trying to describe yeah. him, but Keshi was not only a footballer, he was a born leader. Mm. I want to say, mm. as, as Shakespeare says, some leaders are made, some yeah. are born, born. Some, are, you know, he was some, he was a born leader, yeah. and it, it takes everything so, so calm, so calmly on the bench. You see him on the bench at times, at times he calls me, say, "Boy, come and sit on the bench." I say, okay. I me, mean, I can't even stay there. The way my heart will be beating, even sitting behind him, and I now come and sit on the bench. But he's so calm, and he will say, he still has, his... Uh, his calmness to tell the players, I think you should move like this. I think you should do this. I think mm -hmm. you should. I mean, there was, I, I, I recall a particular occasion where we were with the home based, you know, preparing uh, uh, for the Nations Cup in South Africa 2013 that we eventually won. Keshi was trying to lecture this boy, the likes of uh, Azubike, Gwekwe, you know, you know them, Sunday Mba and Co. He was trying to tell them, teach them a particular pattern, that when you move like this, uh, it's just uh, I'm not a coach, but the way he was doing it, yeah. and the players were not following. And at the point, he said, if I am teaching you this, and you are not following, now if the foreign based players come, they don't have two legs mm. or four legs. They have two legs like you have. Yeah. They have one head. They have everything that you have. So why are you not following? And mm. he, he walked out on the pitch. And I recall that day, Dan the Bull Amokachim went to him and started begging. He said, no, he said, no, no, these boys are not following. I have told them up to four times, and I want to take them to the Nations Cup. And after a while, he came back, and all of them started prostrating before him. He said, no, 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 no. Don't prostrate. Just follow what I, the instructions that I am given. And they followed. And it, he said, if I have 12 of you in the national team that to the Nations Cup, what is, what is wrong with that? So I want, I want to take as many of you to the Nations Cup yeah. as possible. And players, they didn't believe. But lo and behold, nine of them went to the Nations Cup and we won it. And, and uh, the main contributors to, the, to that particular victory. We are even the home best players on the bar, as yeah. we came with all of them. Mm. Godfrey Obabona. Godfrey Obabona is, 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 you can't do without him in the national team of today. Mm. Wow. Those were the players that were made by the big boss. I mean, there's no doubt about it, Austin, but I just want Ben to quickly share with mm. us your final moments uh, with the late great uh, Stephen Cash. Ooh. If, if, if I say that, it's, it's, I always, I've said it to a couple of persons, it was uh, unbelievable that, I, I, you know, we were, yes, uh, Kenna Hillary, I know you recall, it was part of our Chan uh, team, yeah. national team that uh, won uh, the bronze medal bronze in South Africa. Africa. Yeah, he came to the office uh, of Sports Day newspapers. Uh, alongside myself uh, and the uh, judo John Igalu Jr. Mm. Well, he plays, uh, uh, he can now plays in Slovakia. I think uh, uh, judo John Igalu, the younger brother to the more popular Igalu, plays in Malta. Mm. So they came and said they wanted to talk to uh, the big boss uh, because he can said his wedding a week after Ogenyo uh, 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 Nazi's wedding. Okay. And I said, okay, ah, he said they've been trying his international line and the line has not been there. I said, no, but the man is in Benin, mm. so let's call him. Yeah. Okay. So I put a call through to him and he picked. That was on oh, the same time. day, the, 
at, at about 6 p.m., wow. 6 05 p.m., the, the, the same night that he later died. Mm. And he picked, he, cited, he sounded very excited to speak to me. He said, that's what he used to call me, Moga, how are you? And I said, no, big boss, you have your players here. They say, Ken has said his wedding a week after Onazi's uh, wedding. So what do we do? And his own is in Enugu. He said, okay, uh, uh, give him the phone. I gave him the phone. And Ken has spoke with him. And he said, okay, once we finish Onazi's wedding, we will go to Ikenazo. I said, okay, the big boss, we know we spoke for like close to eight, nine, ten minutes, we were on the phone, just chatting excitedly, you know. It was his usual self. Usual self, sound voice, yeah. and he was even saying, as I finish here, I think I will go chop my pepper soup, you know, the way, mm. he, he, that's the way he jokes, you know. And only for me to, the, the early morning hours, for somebody to say, uh, uh, that uh, he slumped and uh, he's no more. And and that is <laughs> tough. Ben, I'll get you talking again, particularly when I put that call across to you. Let's tribute coming yeah. from every part of this world for uh, the late coach, Stephen Keshe. More love for the coach. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.